Week 8, problem 3. A solenoid of radius r equals 1.25 centimeters and length of l equals 25 centimeters has 300 turns and carries 12 amps. All right, so this guy is going to be talking about flux. When we, talk, when we think about flux, what we're going to think about is, let's see here, flux equals b dot a. Perfect. So for the magnetic field here, we're going to use the magnetic field from the solenoid. Now the area is, we're only going to use the area on the center. So the way I like to think of this is a flux is Tesla's times meter squared. It's not Tesla's per meter squared, it's Tesla's times meter squared. So another way we can rewrite this would be, if it makes you feel more, more comfortable, the integral b dot dA. So this is kind of useful because then in this case, over here, we can look at it as two separate, um, so I'll draw a picture here. This is inside the solenoid, this is outside the solenoid. This will be, I'll call this R1, call this big R, and I'll just call this little R. So what we could do is we can do two integrals, one from zero to R, B dot DA, and then we can do another one from R to big R, B dot DA. So what happens then, is this second B right here, that's zero. It's gonna be constant and it's gonna be zero. Which can make this whole second part of the integral zero. Well, on the inside though, we're gonna have a constant magnetic field, which is gonna be this guy. So we're gonna have mu naught I, number of turns per length. <coughs> and then we're gonna have the area of the inner circle, pi R squared. So this is gonna give us meter squared. This is gonna give us Tesla's so we're going to have Tesla's meter squared, which is the units we need for flux. All right? Perfect. So let's do this. So for part A, we're going to have <coughs> mu naught i times number of turns. How oh, is it? 300? 300. 300 over the length which is 0.25. One, 0.25, yep, 0.25. 0.25. All right. And then we need to multiply that by the area. So we're only going to use the area of the center portion because that's the only portion that has any magnetic field. So pi r squared. by 1.25, yep, times 1.25 squared, times 1.25 squared, pi r squared, there we go. And let's see here, probably should simplify a little bit. So 4 pi times 10 to the negative seventh times i, oh there, to give us i, I think it's 12, 12 times 3 times 10 to the second times another pi times 1.25 I actually need to convert this guy into meters so we also need 10 to the negative second and that guy is also going to be squared squared which will be 10 to the negative fourth there we go divided by point I will call this 25 times 10 to the negative second alright so we got 10 to the negative second here which is going to be same as a 10 to the second up top, right? So then, zooming in slightly, we have 4 pi, we have a 12, we have another pi, so I'm going to square this guy, we have a 3, and we have a 0.25 squared, 1.25 squared, and then we're going to be divided by 25, and then we need to combine all the exponents here, so we've got negative 7. So these guys together become 10 to the negative 5th. These guys together become 10 to the negative 9th. These guys together become 10 to the negative 7th. Which I'm going to rewrite as 10 to the negative 6 and 10 to the negative 1. 
perfect. Alright, so now I need to wolfram some of this. So 4 times pi times pi. I did that instead of squaring it. Times, I'm going to do 36 times 1.25 squared divided by 25. And just to make my life easy, I'm going to do times 10 to the negative 7th. I think it was negative 7th. Yep. Now just give me the answer. So 8.9 times 10 to the negative 6 equals 8.9 times 10 to the negative 6. And there we go. Which then will just be 8.9 for the micro Weber's. So again, a Weber is just a Tesla meter squared. Tesla times meter squared, not divided. All right. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty reasonable. All right. Let's move on to the next guy. So find B. Figure B. Both shows an enlarged end view of the same solenoid. Calculate the flux through the tan area, which is annulus with an inner radius of 0.4 and outer radius of 0.8 centimeters. Okay, so I'm just going to write up the formula again. We're going to work from there. So flux equals, I'm going to use the integral this time, dot dA. So we know the magnetic field inside of a solenoid will be the same uh, constant, so we can pull out the B. And we know the area on the inside is just going to be, the, I guess, the uh, difference of the uh, two radii. So it'll be pi r squared. So it'll be pi r b squared minus pi r a squared. Well, this is, I think actually they label that as b. Yep, they label one of them as b and the other is a. So we can simplify this then to, um, let's see here, we'll call this b, we'll call this pi, we'll do a b squared minus a squared. Okay? So, hmm, I should have just written down what B was. Hmm, should have solved for B. I'm going to solve for B right now. So, B solenoid equals mu naught I times number of turns over the length, which is 4 pi. Zoom in just a little bit. There we go. Equals 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th times the current, which we know is 12, times the number of turns, which we know is 300, over the length, which we know is 0.25. Okay? Might simplify this guy. Just, no, I'm not even going to simplify. So, do 4 times times pi times 10 to the negative 7th. Uh, I can see I'm not the first person to do this. Times 12 times 300 divided by 0.25. There we go. And this will just give us Teslas. This would be, wow, that's a lot of Teslas. Ah, they put the 10 to the 7th on the bottom. That makes sense. Make sure that looks kind of what we want. 4 pi, 12, 300. Yeah, close enough. 0 0.0181. So this is the same as 1.81 times 10 to the negative second times 10 to the negative second. Teslas. All right. So we're going to do right here then. 1.81 times 10 to the negative second times pi times now in this case we're going to there's centimeter squared so it's going to be 0.4 and 0.8 so it's going to be this guy is going to be 0.8 times 10 to the negative second squared which will then be 0.8 squared I'm going to call that 8 times 10 to the negative third there we go and when we square that, we're going to get 64, 64 times 10 to the negative sixth. 
So this is going to be 64 minus 16, and I factor out the times 10 to the negative 6 over here. Perfect. So we're going to do 1.81. 1.81 times pi times quantity, 64 minus 16. And this gives us 273. It gives us 273 times 10 to the negative 6. Hmm. 273 times 10 to the negative 6. Yeah, that seems kind of reasonable. Two hundred seventy-three times ten to the negative. Nope, because they're already micro. That's the negative six. All right. So now it would make sense to me that the top one would be bigger than the second one. So I'm going to redo the top one just to make sure I got this correct. So we want to find the flux going through the surface of the disshaped area of the radius. Right, R that's positioned. So even though that big R is uh, larger than the small R, it doesn't matter. All we're going to worry about is the small R. So we know what the magnetic field is, 1.81 times 10 to the negative second. So the flux then should be 1.81 1.81 times 10 to the negative second Teslas times the area which will be pi r squared pi or r in this case is 1.25 times 10 to the negative second because they're in centimeters squared so this will give us 1.81 times pi times 1.25 squared we're going to have a 10 to the negative second here then we're going to have two more 10 to the negative seconds here so we cubed so 1.81 times pi times 1.25 squared squared and that gives us 8.9 okay and that gives us 8.9 times 10 to the negative sixth um, Weber's, which would be 8.9, yeah, micro Weber's. Hmm. So then, why would we have a greater flux for this guy? Maybe I figured this area wrong. I'm gonna check this area real quick. So, for the area of B, we're going to have, so the circle B will be pi r squared, where this r is 0 0.8. So we have pi times 8 times 10 to the negative third squared. Okay? And that's going to give us pi times 64 times 10 to the negative sixth. Okay? And then for A, we're going to do something similar, and we're going to get pi times 16 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay? Ah, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Should have Yeah, there we go. This right here, I think it's supposed to be negative 8. So equals 1.81 times pi. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, yep. 64 minus 16, I should just figure that one out. If I was a better person, I could do it in my head. But I'm not. 48 times 48 times 10 to the negative 8. There we go. So 1.81 times pi times 48. times 10 to the negative 8th. There we go. And we get 2.73 times 10 to the negative 6. Aha!
There we go. 2.73 microwaters. And that makes sense. So since we have few we have um, the same magnetic field but we have smaller meter squared, then it makes sense that we're gonna have a smaller flux. Perfect. Now this now this guy's correct. Okay, and that's how you do number three on to number four.